Hello everyone, so in today's video I want to talk about why so many Uber drivers or minicab drivers in London are quitting the trade. I know every single week TFL is pushing uh, over a hundred drivers, a hundred new drivers. They just push and push and push um, so many drivers on the road without taking into consideration traffic or the number of, um, the or the fact that there are all, almost a hundred thousand uh, drivers in London. So. But before I address that that uh, issue, let me tell let me respond to a couple of comments from my previous video where some people said that I am quite negative towards the trade and uh, that uh, I criticize other minicab drivers in London. And let me tell you this: I'm still a minicab driver in London at the moment. I why would I uh, why would I criticize someone that does the same job as me? As, as me. What I hate, however, it's a small number of drivers who are spreading lies and deception about this trade. This small number of drivers, they're telling people that you're basically becoming a millionaire being an Uber driver in London, so they could get the, their commission uh, from Uber or Bolt. So they, at the moment, Uber and Bolt are offering 500 pounds for anyone who offers a referral. So these people are going around telling their friends, family or enemies, I don't know, uh, how great Uber is and you can make, um, I don't know, like 50 pounds an hour working as an Uber driver in London. Um, and other people are being naive. They sign up with TFL and uh, these um, drivers that I dislike, they get their commission, 500 pounds commission. And they, you know, like um, they just left all the way to the bank. Meanwhile, the other drivers, they have to deal with the reality of being a private hire driver in London. And this is what I want to talk about today. Why so many drivers are quitting the trade. So basically, most likely half of the people who are getting the license this week, they're not going to be in the trade next year. And this is and there is one particular reason why taxes. So when you become a, a minicab driver in London, nobody tells you uh, they tell you you need to pay taxes, but nobody explains you how tax system works. So on the first uh, on the first year of self-employment, HMRC is not going to ask you just the tax for uh, this year. For, I mean, for the year that you just wait, just work. But they're going to ask you the tax for the next year in advance because they want to make sure you're paying your taxes correctly. So they're going to. Um, uh, estimate how much money you're going to make next year based on how much money you declare you made this year and then they're going to ask you double the tax. Obviously they will deduct it in the future so it will work out on a long term. Uh, but a lot of people they don't understand they don't know this um, and then they just slapped with this huge uh, HMRC tax um, that they have to pay and you know why they realize uh, it was all a deception. Uh, so let me explain you why. Um, at the moment, TFL is going to hand you uh, a license like Prince Andrew hands free candies. Sorry, that was a bad joke. Um, so um, TFL is going to give you a, a private hire license. Very easy to get. Everyone can get it. Um, you know, doesn't matter how you get to, Lo to London, you, you'll get the private hire license. Uh, then you go to rent a car. Then you work about 40 hours a week because that's how much you work at the previous at your previous job. You know, maybe you are doing Amazon deliveries. Actually, they work a, a lot harder on Amazon deliveries. Uh, let's say you are working in McDonald's or retail or Tesco. So you are making you are working 40 hours a week uh, and you're probably making like nine, 10 pounds an hour. So on your first week, you work 40 hours and you realize that you made for 40 hours as an Uber driver in London, you probably could make about 800 pounds at the end of the week. So you say to yourself, oh my gosh, I made 800 pounds. This means that I'm making 20 pounds an hour. Oh, this is fantastic. I just doubled my income within a week. Oh, great. But then, and this is the fun part, then you have to pay because you're self-employed and you have to pay to work. So first of all, you start your work um, on a minus. So um, out of that 800 pounds, 
160 160 pounds it goes to your car rental and i'm being very you know like very realistic here because you can get rent a car for like 250 pounds but you know you can find like an older car for 160 pounds i could not find anything cheaper than this so out of 800 pounds uh 160 goes to rental and you're left with 640 pounds and you say to yourself okay 640 pounds still better than how much i was making at uh, tesco or sainsbury's but then you have to pay for the petrol because your um, your uh, petrol tank is empty. So that goes another 100 pounds because you know what? You're sitting in traffic and you don't fill the petrol once. You have to fill it a couple of times. Um, and you're like, okay, I still have some money left. Uh, at least this job is flexible. I can work whenever I want. Uh, then you have to pay your insurance because you cannot work with your normal car insurance. You have to get a higher and reward insurance, which is stupidly higher than nor your normal car insurance. Because right now you have to pay uh, public liability insurance. So as a new driver, you're going to pay higher insurance based on how much um, how much how many points you have on your license or how many accidents you had in the past. I if you don't have any points or um, you still have like a relatively clean driving license. I would say expect as a new driver to pay in a region of 70 pounds a week per insurance. All right. So out of that, now you start to panic because out of 800 pounds, you are left with 470 pounds after you pay for car rental and for petrol and for insurance. Um, but then taxes and nobody thinks about taxes until they fill up their first tax return which is in the next year but if you're smart enough you think about your tax as well so um, out of uh, 400 pounds 470 pounds that you have left after you deduct your expenses you probably should expect to pay over 20 percent in tax uh, you might say but wait uh, the first um, 12,000 pounds are um, you don't pay taxes uh what's it called um are basically you don't pay tax you pay taxes after 1200 12000 pounds but the thing is that you also have to pay national insurance and if you're a class 4 national insurance uh, which means you make over 6000 pounds um in profit as a self employed expect to pay 9% of that in uh, in uh, uh national insurance so you're probably left with about 370 pounds and after you calculate all this money you realize that at the end of the week you did not make 20 pounds an hour you actually made nine pounds an hour which is even less than what you made um as a um, tesco worker for example or a sainsbury worker or working for i don't know some retail job and then you have to deal with the hassle of being self-employed because you have to take care of every single aspect of this. Um, and people don't realize this until their first tax. But this is not all. Okay, though, so this is not all, guys, because on your first year as self-employed, HMRC will make you pay the tax for the next year. And people don't know this. They, they only realize this when they fill up their first self-assessment. And... At the end of the year, you probably have to pay five thousand pounds in uh, tax if you work about forty hours a week, and then HMRC said, comes out and says, "Well, I'm sorry, but we estimate that you're going to make the same amount next year, so we want to pay. We want to ask you to pay uh, nine thousand pounds, for example." Um, and you don't know that, so you have to pay that money. And this is where most of the people are quitting being mini cab drivers in London. They realize that they are better off as being uh, as working for someone else, because um, yes, you might make twenty pounds an hour as a mini cab driver in London, but more than half of that goes to your expenses and goes to your taxes. And you might say, "I'm not going to pay my taxes." You know what? I'm, not, I'm going to avoid to pay my taxes. Well, guess what? HMRC knows every single penny that goes into your bank. And when you're going to get audited, because let's face it, right now they have the technology to see whoever gets a lot of money in the bank but pay no taxes. And when you're going to get audited, you're going to get in big trouble 
you're gonna get lose your credit um your your credit rating is gonna plummet down and it's you know like it's something that is not worth it to do um so yeah this is the main reason why so many drivers are quitting driving in london after one year after just one year of being a minicab driver in london but meanwhile and the, a small amount of minicab drivers are crit are you know like they're just spreading all these lies how great it is to be a minicab driver in london and this is these are the drivers that i'm trying to expose people who are lying about the trade and they don't tell you the reality of being a minicab driver in london all right guys this is it for today i hope you have a great day um just give me a like or a subscribe or whatever people say at the end of these videos anyway <clears throat> Have a great Sunday or Monday or whatever it is when you watch this video.